How do your steeples look? They are a real look at me part of a building and therefore part of our drawing. But what do we see when we look at them? Do we capture the effortless soaring grace of steeples or is there something not quite right about our steeples? Something that even if the viewer can't work out exactly what it is wrong, it creates an unease and distracts from appreciating the overall scene that we've drawn. In this video, I'll show you the three most common mistakes I see in drawings of steeples. Do you make any of them yourself in your drawings? Knowing what these three common mistakes are helps me to focus extra attention when I draw steeples to avoid falling into the errors. At the end of this video, I'll show you a quick version of a really interesting steeple I've just come across when I was in the city recently. So let's look at our first common error. Here we have a nice tall steeple on top of a tower. To understand this point, we need to consider what we see of a steeple is determined by where we are in relation to it. And when we think of steeples, we're often thinking of views of steeples from a long distance away, where in effect we're pretty much looking at the steeple side on. But let's consider an observer on the same level ground as our tower looking at a steeple. And this is the space of their viewing where they see the tower. Now because they're down looking up and because a steeple can be very tall, the base of the steeple is actually closer to them than the top of the steeple, which means the side of the steeple is actually moving away from them. And we know from perspective that when an object is moving away, it narrows, which means as our person is looking at the length of this steeple, it's becoming narrower as it gets higher. A way I've also found helpful to think of this is that in effect, this is the length of our spire that's been seen by our person. It's not actually as tall as our spire really is. And the proportions of this spire change more and more the higher it gets. What happens if our person comes closer? Well, they're still looking up at the spire, but now they're seeing the spire within this band of vision. We can see that the apparent height of the spire to this observer is less than it appears to this observer. If we move closer again to our steeple, we can see that the apparent height of our steeple is much shorter than it is to the person over here. And if we get right up close to our steeple, from this position, there's very little of the steeple observable at all. So what might this look like? if we're looking at our steeple from the same angle as these people. We know our steeple is really this high, but from this distance, because we're looking up at the steeple and foreshortening, our steeple will look this high because we're looking up at it. For this observer, our steeple is looking like this. For this observer, our steeple is only looking this high. And for this observer, we're not seeing much steeple at all. Now, of course, the other thing we need to remember is that as we move closer, we're going to start to get the effect of vertical perspective on the tower itself. And so for this observer here, the tower may actually be sloping like this. And of course, the opposite works. If we move far away enough, further than we have paper to draw, eventually, this tower will look almost in correct proportions because these lines will be coming out almost horizontally. If in fact, our observer was standing on a platform here, then because the steeple is seen more side on, it would look far closer to its true height. So it's the general principle of perspective again that how something looks depends on where we are when we're looking at it. And this becomes tricky when we draw, because often when we draw a steeple, we know what it looks like when we see it side on. We know how tall it is, and thinking that we know what that shape looks like can distract us from observing what we actually see carefully enough, what we actually see 
from the position our observer or our photo reference is from. Let me explain why this matters and a problem I see often with drawings of towers, particularly when we're a bit closer to the tower looking up at it. So here we have our tower with our steeple on top. The effect that we often see is that this steeple has not been foreshortened enough. Instead of drawing perhaps this proportion, it's been drawn with this proportion. And because this means that the steeple is too tall for the perspective we're looking at it with, it, it creates the illusion that in fact the steeple is leaning towards us. Because, because that's how the steeple needs to be to actually give us this apparent height when we're looking up at it. Because the apparent height of our steeple, if it was in place on the tower, would be a lot less. And I look at many drawings of steeples on towers that make me feel very uneasy because I feel like it's actually falling on top of me. And while it may not look as obvious here, because this is a triangular shape. It becomes more obvious when there's other architectural elements on the steeple, if they're also not all foreshortened as tightly as they need to be. And I think this happens because when we're familiar with a steeple from real life and how particularly how tall it is, it lulls us into thinking we know its proportions, which stops us from actually observing what we can really see when we're viewing it from close up, looking up. So as we get closer and closer to the steeple, the shape of the top of the steeple changes from being thinner to being wider. If we look at this very tall, elegant spire in Edinburgh close up, it becomes a very different shape. And this is the sort of steeple where if we don't observe what we actually see carefully, we become influenced by what we know is a very tall, elegant shape. And we don't draw what we're actually seeing. And if we're to make this steeple too tall, it's going to look like it's falling down on us because the foreshortening up here doesn't connect with the foreshortening down here. And the only way our brain can explain what we're seeing is that the steeple is now leaning towards us which of course would make it look taller. So that's the first point. Really pay attention to the foreshortening of your steeples and spires to make sure they don't look as though they're about to fall on us as we look at your drawing. The second point is a really quick one and it's to do with drawing the tower that the steeple usually sits on. A very common perspective angle that we draw is one such as this Baroque tower in Vienna where one side of the tower is more facing us than the other side of the tower which slopes away from us at a greater angle and which therefore has greater foreshortening on it. What I often see, if this represents the proportions of this top section, is that when the side which is foreshortened more is drawn, it's drawn too wide for the proportions that we've established in the side of the tower that's facing us more directly. If we actually measure the front of our tower, we can see that it's 24 millimeters wide. And if we measure the side, it's eight. So this distance is actually a third of this distance. But here we have a distance of 21 millimeters. So this should be seven. And instead it's 11. So this space is half as wide again as it should be. And I think there's a very simple reason why we make this mistake so easily. And that's because when we draw this section, we usually start with this line and we focus on this line, which is a bit hidden with the trees here. So we'll come down to here. We focus on this line. And because this line is a diagonal, it's actually quite a longer distance than this distance, which is the area we need to define. So when I'm drawing the foreshortened side of the tower that my steeple sits on, at first I don't focus on this line, I focus on this distance. And I try and get a sense of what is this distance as a proportion of the distance I've already drawn 
and we know it's actually a third. So I look at this distance and I'm thinking of it in terms of thirds. I'll put a dot somewhere where I want this to go. And I get a much more accurate width of this side of the tower in proportion to the more front on view of the tower. I don't focus on this line at the start, but I focus on this distance, which isn't actually a line I'm going to draw. And that's why I think we have to stop and concentrate. So why not try this technique for establishing the more foreshortened side of our tower and see if it's not more accurate for you. Because if we don't get the proportions of our tower correct, it's going to be very hard to draw the steeple sitting on it so that it looks right. We'll either have to change the spire somehow to adjust for the wider width or make it larger in proportion to the tower or have it sit off center. None of which are very good solutions for the look at me piece of architecture in our this drawing. This third point concerns steeples that have a round or cylindrical component to their overall structure. It may look like this, it may look like this, Or it may look like this, where we're actually looking up into it. This is the tower I'm going to draw for you in a moment. But before I do that, let me explain what the problem is that I see so often in drawing these rounded components of towers and steeples. What I see so often is towers that, to simplify the form, look like this. Well, that looks okay, you might say. Let me explain the problem with this with a more detailed diagram. Let's start with the box part of our tower. Firstly, I want us just to think of it as a three-dimensional object. But now we want to put our cylinder on top. Now, the actual cylinder that sits on top of the box isn't going to the edges of the box, so I need to get another square that sits within it. Let's define another spot. Now I know that with this line here, the higher we go from eye level, which is obviously down here, the steeper the angle becomes. So this angle has to be not just parallel, but actually steeper. And if we want to take this further up again, and what we can see happening is that as our ellipses get higher and higher above eye level, they become fuller and fuller or rounder and rounder. And this is the silhouette that represents various cross sections of our cylinder. Problem with this drawing is that as our cylinder's gone even higher above eye level, we've been happy just to say, oh, that's a curve and draw a very shallow curve. So if I draw this the way it should be, so besides doing a much fuller curve here to reflect the angle we're looking up at it from, I've also foreshortened the cone on top. And when we compare the two simplified outlines of our tower and steeple, we can see that this one looks very flat and doesn't give a really obvious sense of where we're looking at it from because this looks like we're looking up at it, but this looks like we're not looking up at it as strongly as we're looking up at it from there. Whereas in this tower, the three elements we have to judge perspective are all consistently telling us this tower, this steeple is getting higher and higher and higher. And of course, the more extreme the perspective angle is, I always feel the greater the sense of visual drama that we capture in our scene. So by not carefully observing the changes in perspective in the basic shapes of our steeple and its tower, again, as we found in the two earlier problems, what we end up doing is confusing and reducing the impact of the actual perspective of the scene. And because the difference between this and this may be quite subtle, it's not always obvious that it's a problem, it just doesn't look quite right. If we look at this steeple here, we can see that it really comes around in a very full ellipse. And we want to capture this sense at the side, not to have it come in just a shallow arc. And again, 
If I can anticipate the spots I'm likely to trip up in observing my reference accurately, then it helps me to pay more attention, better focus on particularly those points that can be so crucial for the overall effect of our drawing. If we have the basic underlying forms of our tower and steeple wrong for the perspective that we're looking at it at, we really then waste our time putting all the extra fancy architectural details on it because it's still just going to look not quite right. Time to draw our tower. So here's a quick one minute version of me drawing this little steeple on the top of an arts and crafts Art Nouveau type building from the 1920s at Sydney University. I thought it was an amazing little structure on top of a very beautifully proportioned and designed building. Look, it's not my best drawing, but in fairness, I have been awake since 4.30 this morning and it's dinner time now, so I'm feeling pretty ordinary. But I hope you've found the three points helpful. I wish I'd paid more attention to them when I was actually drawing this, but um, just trying to stay awake at the moment. Certainly to understand these three areas where we can easily make mistakes drawing steeples and spires and little towers and turrets and things really helps us to focus, to know what we need to focus on when we observe and therefore what to concentrate on when we draw. I'm Stephen Travers. I hope you found it interesting, but more especially helpful for when you go to draw these structures yourself because they're great little architectural details to draw. See you next time.